Hello again, 110. In this video, I'm going to go over a straight PowerPoint presentation from the old textbook, the 13th edition on Chapter 9, Public Opinion and the Media. What is public opinion? It's attitudes about political issues, leaders, institutions, and it can be understood on two levels. And this is the key thing to remember. There is individual public opinion, what a person thinks, and the aggregate. And this is what political scientists do. They study and try to find what the aggregate public opinion is. And they do this in a variety of statistical measurements like polls, votes, town meetings, protests, and what have you. Preferences, beliefs, and choices matter. And this is shaped usually for the purposes of this class by economic self-interest. This tends to be the main reason people believe and express certain opinions because of what's in their pockets, more so than social or moral values. Some people are fanatical about social and moral values more so than economic self-interest, but generally speaking, the majority of people are motivated by economics. And these beliefs reflect how people understand the world around them. And sometimes these choices don't mesh up with our preferences or beliefs. Government policies directly affect Americans' financial and social well-being in a variety of ways. And sometimes these ethical and moral values that we have come into conflict with our financial and social values. Also, we have different identities, our race, religion, and geographic origin, our languages that we speak, and our partisan identification impact our opinions as well. Social origins of preferences. It begins very early in life in the family and then it's tempered by schooling. It's tempered by religion or experiences with your peers and this is political socialization. The induction of individuals into the political culture, saying the pledge to the flag, reciting the star-spangled banner, singing various songs. This is another way in which you are politically socialized. And these are important agents of this process. Again, as I mentioned, it begins in the family. It gets tempered by schooling and then by peer pressure. And also people are influenced by the zitgeist or the spirit of the times, the times they live in, the political conditions they grew up in. People who grew up in the Great Depression have a much different worldview or Weltanschauung than people who grew up in the 1950s United States. Very different ideas of what is possible and what is not possible. Parents don't necessarily teach their kids about politics, but kids absorb conversations around them and often identify what that orientation of those conversations are. My father was very conservative. My mother tends to be more liberal. Eh, yes or no. Usually as you become more educated, your affiliation, in other words, are you a Democrat or Republican? Are you a liberal or conservative? It may change over time. It may be the same as your parents. Higher levels of educational attainment tend to be associated with changes in political beliefs. And here's an old survey you know, most college graduates, overwhelming majority, believe that men and women should have equal roles. Uh, abortion should never be permitted. Those with college education would never say that. Ironically enough, those college graduates don't really think it's only 49% that national health insurance should be offered. They don't really believe that bringing democracy to other nations is very important. 
government should ensure fair treatment and jobs for African Americans. And it's, there's a majority of people who believe that. Fewer services to reduce government spending. Younger people don't believe in that at all because they're usually the ones who benefit from those particular services. Generally speaking, the answer to this question is yes. Groups are very influential agents of socialization. Political party affiliation, are you in a union or some kind of association of occupation? Others are involuntary. We can't control what our race or our gender was. We were born with them. And this is another source of socialization. Self-interest, there's also interest groups. We'll talk about that in chapter 12. Here's another survey on same-sex marriage. The evangelicals tend to be heavily opposed. White non-evangelicals, and eh, not the majority, are opposed. Catholics tend to be 50-50 on this. Black Protestant, ironically enough, are opposed. And this is a dated question, no longer applicable. The gender gap, please be familiar with this, is that women, right through the present 2016 results, tend to vote Democratic and men tend to vote more Republican. The gender gap still exists in 2017. Please remember that. Women tend to vote Democratic mainly because their services that are offered by Democratic Party, many of their planks are issues that women identify with. And here is another survey and showing the differences between men and women on certain government actions. What these numbers mean can be interpreted very differently by different people. And again, I just mentioned this, when you come of age, right, the spirit of the time, the zitgeist of the time has a big influence on your socialization. And individuals and groups change as political conditions change. Hopefully by now in 110, you are starting to develop this ideological outlook if you have not done so already. And these are American Western terms. Ideology is the underlying ideas and beliefs through which people understand and interpret politics. We touched on this in the last chapter. Generally speaking, people tend to be liberal or conservative. Please be familiar with what these different groups represent. Conservatives tend to support the status quo. They are suspicious of new ideas and government formulas attempting to change the status quo because a large government tends to pose a threat to individual freedoms. But liberals support political and social reform. They like to see government regulation of the economy and the expansion of federal social services and more vigorous efforts on behalf of the poor, minorities, and women. They want to see more concern for consumers and the environment. Again, hopefully you are developing this outlook. Ideology is important in terms of the political parties because it gives people an idea. If you vote for a certain candidate in the Democratic or Republican Party, you pretty much know what they stand for. And it saves people time. Because people are very busy nowadays and they might not have enough opportunity in order to study the issues at hand. This is dangerous though in a democratic society. 
because the media is very important in trying to influence people. And we've seen more and more presidents going public with a way of trying to press their policy initiatives. Some presidents are more successful than others, depending upon their speaking ability. Reagan, Obama, very, very effective public speakers. President Carter, not so much. President Nixon, not so much. Private groups, again, interest groups are very involved in trying to shape opinion as well as we'll see in Chapter 12. The media is the big shaper of public opinion today. The traditional sources, newspaper, radio, and television are being supplanted by the internet and social media today. For this generation, this is more important than the traditional sources. The print media is in serious jeopardy today because everybody carries some kind of device and that tends to be where people get their information from. The broadcast media, traditionally, you had the big three. Those were the big television networks. Then you had cable come in in the 80s and 90s. Fox News tends to be more conservative. MSNBC tends to be more liberal. Talk radio has been very powerful medium for mobilizing conservatives. Left-wing radio has been much less successful in accomplishing this. Everyone is familiar with the power of the internet today. And this is more surveys. If you're interested, you can look at this slide at another time. Freedom of the press tends to be politically protected, but prior restraint is unconstitutional. Framing is the power of the media to influence how events and issues are interpreted. And that's it.